Welcome to Garden City Church, a place where you can belong before you believe. This week, Tanika is giving us a message continuing the ways we say, I love you. And I just want to let you know this summer, if you're local, we have quite a few events coming up really soon and just throughout the summer. Please sign up uh, through, by sending us an email and you can get connected to our weekly newsletter. That's the best way to know what's going on in our church. If you'd like to partner with us here at Garden City, there's three ways you can do that. You can like and subscribe. You can share this video with a friend or you can partner with us financially. You can do that through our website or by mailing us a check. We love all of you so much. Thank you for being here. Let's get into the word with Tanika. Hi everybody, it's Tanika. I cannot express how humbled and grateful I am to be sharing this word with you as we continue in our series, Ways We Say I Love You. I was so inspired by the word given last week by Pastor George and the idea of servant leadership, um, walking away with the reminder that the highest level is servanthood really alleviated my own personal concerns about loving others in a way that doesn't require me to be more than who I am currently, full of faults, downfalls, and insecurities. Um, if you are not feeling qualified to serve and represent Christ on this earth, be <laughs> encouraged. Allow Christ to do a work in you as you share what has been dispensed to you and um, really give out the love that God has shown you and the kindness that He has shown you. Have any of you ever seen um, businesses that still operate while they're under construction? There's a big mess, but they're still operating, still providing services, still doing everything that they need to do. It's just very chaotic. Um, you'll see a sign that says, open while under construction. And that, I think, is my life motto right now. Um, I have had to accept that God has called me to be open while under construction, and I have a feeling that I'm not the only one. God has highlighted Mark 5, 1 through 18, where Jesus restores a man that's been possessed by a demon. And um, I just want to really look at that and see where that might spark something in you that might connect you to this mission that we're on to show love in our community and in our world. Let's read. So they went across the lake to the region of the Gerasenes. And this is Jesus and his disciples. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain. So he's just like breaking chains like Hulk Hogan <laughs> everywhere and nobody could contain him. And so he's running around in this graveyard. Let's continue. So for he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. To give a little bit of context, the people in the region where Jesus was visiting, they were not Jewish. And it would be considered um, to be unclean to even be in a graveyard, let alone in the presence of someone with unclean spirits. Let's continue. Verse 6 it says, When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. In this part of the story, um, it would not have gone the same way if I was around. I probably would have been out of there a long time ago, landing somewhere where there's this man that's strong. His might is above everybody and everything, chains and all. And now he's saying that he is possessed by a spirit that's name is Legion because there are so many spirits that are within this man. 
It says, and he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out of the area. A large herd of pigs, also not Jewish, (laughs) was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission, and then pure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd about two thousand in number rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this in the town and the countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons sitting there dressed in his right mind, and they were afraid. I could imagine why. (laughs) Those who had seen it told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man and about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, go home to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away, began to tell the Decapolis, which means 10 towns, and there's debate about which 10 towns it is exactly, (laughs) but it's 10 towns. So here this man is telling this whole region how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. So just to give the story a little bit more context, in the previous chapter, we have Jesus and his disciples crossing over a lake after teaching a large crowd. Um, They were met with a violent storm. In fear of their lives, they wake up Jesus, and he calls the waters to be still and the storms to cease. So they overcame the winds and the waves, a whole storm that threatened to take their lives until Jesus spoke stillness over the storm. When they stepped out of the boat, they were suddenly confronted by a man with an unclean spirit. So this is a wild ride here going on. I just want to let everybody know that's in the sound of my voice. Do not be surprised that when you make up your mind that you will trust the calling Jesus has placed on your life, that suddenly an opportunity will present itself. Stepping out in faith into the unknown to suddenly come face to face with an opportunity to show God's love. Verse 9 says, Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he he replied, for we are many. A man crying out, out and cutting himself in the night. Did Jesus tell the disciples where they were going? If so, they made no mention of it in the word. Did he hear his cry? I don't know. What I do know is that out of this man's torture, pain, possession, and ultimately his healing, a ministry was birthed. Out of All the times Jesus told others to follow him, and granted, I tried to look this up. (laughs) Like, How many times did Jesus say, follow me? There's great debate about that, I found. So I don't have an exact number, but there are several times of examples where God says, follow me, follow me, follow me. But that's not the case here. He says, to go to your own people and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he has mercy on you. I was initially saddened reading this because the people in the town had asked Jesus to leave. All these examples that we see of Jesus in the Bible where crowds were around him, pressing in on him, trying to hear a word. There's many people just coming to Jesus, wanting to be near him, wanting to be close to him. And these people, which were Gentiles, um, asked Jesus to leave after hearing what had taken place. They were afraid, but I now recognize that he did not have to stay because the man who is not even named in this passage immediately started his ministry and went and told 
everyone that God, what God had done for him. So this man who is not even named in this passage immediately started his ministry and went and told everyone what God had done for him, all the 10 towns that he had visited. And so there was no requirement for Jesus to stay because this man picked up the baton and ran with it and shared his testimony and his life. Um, The Bible says, and they were amazed. These Gentiles in this region were amazed. Who would have guessed it? The man with the unclean spirits, now a preacher, (laughs) and they were amazed. What are some amazing things God has done in your life? And who can you share this with? I feel like that's such a simple way to really share God's love and to encourage someone else by sharing what God has done personally in your life and being able to connect to somebody in that way. If you are not a believer, I encourage you to give God an opportunity to amaze you. Get to know Him. I know from personal experience that He never fails. Even in the midst of our own downfalls and shortcomings, I've encountered many upsets and heartaches, just like you and everybody else that walks this planet. Um, I know it's really hard, but I also know that He doesn't waste anything or any painful moment or any painful memory or any process that has been difficult or hard. He doesn't waste any of it. He uses it all for His glory and to encourage others, to lift others up, and to build others up. Be reminded that love is healing both to the recipient as well as the giver. So perhaps this is a season where you feel like you don't have much to give. I'm right there with you, but God showed me that there is great impact in some of the things that I would consider to be small. If we are willing, the opportunity will arise. There is life in our words, um, even in voicing our observations. I found great impact. There are so many times that I notice a beautiful trait in somebody and have decided that I shouldn't keep that to myself. So I go ahead and voice those qualities that I see. Or if I see somebody behaving a certain way that I'm like, wow, that's really beautiful. That's really kind. This person is really smart. I try to make it a point to connect with that person and say, this is what I see in you. And it's so amazing. And it's so beautiful. And it's surprising to me, their response, they're always like, oh my goodness, thank you so much. And I'm like, thank you for what? (laughs) All I'm doing is stating an observation. You're the one who holds the qualities. You're the one who's caring for other people. You're the one whose kindness I observed. And so I think that's just such a small way to really step out and encourage somebody and show God's love. And while we're on that topic, I just want to do a little sidebar and say that sometimes the love that we show to others, we don't always show to ourselves. Be reminded that you are a child of God, that you're precious, that you're loved, that He cares for you. And don't be afraid to speak out the great qualities that you see in yourself and be encouraged in that. I believe for many of us, God is really preparing and prompting us to go deeper, to step out in faith, and as um, Pastor George put it, turn up the volume of love. Um, What does that look like for you? That might look like an assortment of things, and it could be that you step out into something that you haven't done before or connect with people that you haven't connected with before or be more mindful of the people that are around you, even in your own household. How can you encourage them? How can you show them love? How can you uplift them? And maybe you are restricted. Maybe you're not in contact with a lot of people, but God is still going to make a way. If you decide in your mind, He will open up an opportunity. And don't be concerned about being qualified because, hey, I'm here. (laughs) This is me standing here. Even my family sometimes looks at me and like, wow, really, Tanika? That's you now? That's you? That's what you're doing? You're, You're out there speaking the Word of God? And it's like, I guess so. Here I am. And I just want to share my own testimony that I came from an an upbringing where 
I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel valued. I didn't feel cared for. You know, I encountered abuse. I've encountered many things. And um, sometimes they just kept on coming. Right now, I'm in a position where I get to care for women who are in pregnancy and low income and facing um, many circumstances. And then I can think back to when here I was thinking that I had won a big prize because I had gotten married and was pregnant with a baby, but then everything went sideways and having to walk away from that marriage, seven months pregnant, being alone (laughs) and thinking like, this is the worst thing I ever could experience. Nothing felt lonelier than that moment. And I just didn't understand what God was doing in my life. I didn't know how to move forward. All I knew how to do was cling to God. And now here I am in this position that I just don't even know how I got here, honestly. And I can care for other women out of the knowledge of the pain that I faced and the things that I went through. And I can walk them through that, um, holding their hand and saying, I get it. God is not going to waste anything that you've been through or the pain that you have suffered. I'm going to encourage you to continue to step out. And I think that this word is for a specific group. And lately, God has been waking me up every morning (laughs) with the same verses. And I'm just like, God, can we do something new? (laughs) But He's really trying to enforce something in me and for me to have a realization. And I want to share it with you because I think that this is going to be a word for you as well. And that is in Isaiah 61. And I'm just going to pull it up real quick for you. And then where it says me, thank you. (laughs) It says the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness from, for the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion. And this part is so beautiful. To bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of His splendor. He's talking about you. You have um, impact, you have importance, and you have the ability to change the atmosphere around you and provide that ripple effect that will branch out. Um, You may not see it (laughs) right away. You may not see the fruits of all your labor, but just know that on the other side of heaven, you're going to be able to see how all this comes together and how all this ties together. Um, Let's take a moment to pray. Heavenly Father, God, I just thank you so much that you're such a good God. God, that in spite of our brokenness, God, in spite of our faults, God, in in spite of our mistakes, God, that you still choose to love us and to utilize us, God, that you have given us the privilege to walk alongside of you, God, in this mission, God, to show love to our community, to our families, to all those around us, God, and to ourselves. God, I pray that you would continue to equip us, God, and I pray that you continue to give us vision and dreams for what you have in front of us, God. God, I just pray your blessing over all that are within the sound of my voice, God, And I just pray that you continue to encourage us in who we are and what we are here to do. In Jesus' name, thank you guys. Love you all. Bye. sings but if I don't have love it means nothing and I can 
spit out some holy words Something that you've never heard But if I don't have love It means nothing If I can't love my neighbor Like I love myself It's life that I've been